Much of what we'll explore today draws from Gwern Branwyn's essay, The Scaling Hypothesis, which has become required reading for understanding modern AI development. Let's start with an analogy. Picture a chef in a tiny kitchen with basic ingredients trying to create a gourmet meal. Now imagine giving that same chef a massive professional kitchen, premium ingredients, and state-of-the-art equipment. The improvement in what they can create isn't just incremental, it's transformative. This simple idea mirrors one of the most fascinating and controversial theories in artificial intelligence, the scaling hypothesis. Ten years ago, most AI researchers believed that building intelligent systems required discovering new breakthrough algorithms. They thought we needed to crack the code of intelligence itself. But what if they were wrong? What if intelligence emerges naturally when you simply make neural networks bigger and train them on more data? This is the essence of the scaling hypothesis. The idea that many aspects of intelligence might emerge spontaneously from neural networks as they scale up, much like consciousness emerged from increasingly complex brains through evolution. But before we dive deeper, let's step back and look at how we got here. In the early days of AI, researchers tried to program intelligence explicitly, writing rules for everything from chess to conversation. It was slow, brittle work. Then came neural networks, systems inspired by our brains that could learn from examples. But for decades, these networks remained small and limited. Something changed around 2012. Computing power had finally reached a critical threshold. Researchers could now build neural networks big enough to learn meaningful patterns from large amounts of data. And they noticed something surprising. The bigger they made these networks, the better they got. Not just at specific tasks, but at generalizing to new situations they weren't explicitly trained for. This is where things get interesting. Think about how children learn language. They don't just memorize phrases. They grasp the underlying patterns and can generate novel sentences they've never heard before. Similarly, large neural networks started showing signs of understanding rather than mere memorization. The GPT series of language models offers a perfect example. GPT-1 could complete sentences reasonably well. GPT-2 could write coherent paragraphs. But GPT-3, with its massive scale increase, showed something qualitatively different. It could understand and follow instructions, solve problems, and even learn new tasks from just a few examples. This wasn't programmed in. It emerged from scale alone. This phenomenon has been called the blessing of scale, where bigger models don't just perform better, they develop new capabilities entirely. It's like crossing a threshold where quantity transforms into quality. A puddle can only reflect images, but an ocean can generate waves, support ecosystems, and influence weather patterns. When you train a neural network on language, it first learns simple patterns, the frequency of letters, common word combinations, basic grammar. But as you scale up the model and expose it to more data, something remarkable happens. The network starts to pick up on increasingly sophisticated patterns, narrative structure, logical reasoning, even abstract concepts. The fascinating part, as Gwern points out in his analysis, is that none of these capabilities were explicitly programmed. The model is just trying to predict the next word in a sequence, but to do that well at scale, it has to develop increasingly sophisticated internal representations of how language and knowledge work. This mirrors how human intelligence might have evolved, not through the sudden emergence of specialized modules, but through the gradual scaling up of pattern recognition capabilities. What's particularly striking is how predictable these improvements are. Researchers have found that many aspects of neural network performance follow clear power laws, mathematical relationships that show how performance improves with scale. These aren't just rough trends, they're remarkably precise predictions that hold true across different types of models and tasks. But here's where the hypothesis gets truly provocative. Some researchers believe this scaling behavior might continue all the way to human-level intelligence and beyond. They argue that just as nature created intelligence through evolutionary scaling of neural systems, we might achieve artificial general intelligence simply by scaling up our artificial neural networks. Critics point out potential flaws in this reasoning. 
They argue that our current neural networks are too simplistic, that we're missing crucial architectural components, or that intelligence requires more than just pattern recognition. These are valid concerns, but the scaling hypothesis has an elegant counter. Perhaps these sophisticated capabilities emerge naturally at scale, just as we've already seen simpler capabilities emerge. This debate reflects a deeper divide in AI research. As Guern describes in his essay, there are essentially two camps. The first believes we need to discover fundamentally new algorithms or architectures to achieve human-level AI. They see our current models as toy systems that can't scale to real intelligence. The second camp, supporters of the scaling hypothesis, argue that we already have the essential ingredients. We just need to make them bigger. What's fascinating is how this mirrors historical debates in other fields. When early evolutionary theorists proposed that complex organisms evolved from simpler ones just through natural selection operating at scale, many critics insisted there must be additional mechanisms. They couldn't believe that such complexity could emerge from simple rules. Yet that's exactly what happened. The scaling hypothesis suggests something similar might be happening with artificial intelligence. The critics who say, it's just pattern matching, might be missing the point. Perhaps pattern matching, when scaled up sufficiently, is all you need. After all, what evidence do we have that human intelligence is anything more than extremely sophisticated pattern recognition? Let's look at some evidence. Research has shown that neural network capabilities often follow surprisingly predictable scaling laws, double the size of a network, and its performance improves by a consistent amount. These improvements don't just stop at some point, they continue as far as we can measure. Even more intriguingly, new capabilities often emerge suddenly at certain scale thresholds, much like how water suddenly transforms into ice at a specific temperature. Consider vision models. Small networks could recognize basic patterns, Larger ones could identify objects. Even larger ones could understand scenes and context. Now, the largest vision models can generate complex images from text descriptions, a capability that seemed magical just a few years ago. Each scale increase brought not just better performance, but qualitatively new abilities. But this raises questions. If intelligence can emerge simply from scaling up pattern recognition, what does that say about human intelligence? Are our own minds just incredibly sophisticated pattern matchers? And if we can create human-level artificial intelligence simply by making networks bigger, should we? The implications extend beyond technology. If the scaling hypothesis is correct, we might be closer to artificial general intelligence than many believe. This wouldn't require new theoretical breakthroughs, just more computing power and data. It's both exciting and unsettling. Think about what this means for the future. If intelligence is largely a product of scale, then artificial intelligence might not just match human capabilities, it could far exceed them. After all, we can build neural networks much larger than human brains, and train them on more data than a human could experience in many lifetimes. Gorn points out a particularly intriguing aspect of this scaling, the hardware overhang. The computing power needed for human-level AI might have existed for years before anyone actually builds it. Why? Because until we understand how to use that computing power effectively, it gets allocated to other tasks. This suggests we might be closer to transformative AI than many people think. We might just need to point existing computing resources in the right direction. This has happened before in the history of technology. The basic principles of nuclear fission were understood years before the Manhattan Project but it took a massive coordination of resources and focus to actually build the first nuclear reactor. Similarly, we might already have the computational resources needed for human-level AI. We just need to commit to using them for that purpose. Consider the rapid progress we've already seen. In just a few years, we've gone from models that could barely write coherent sentences to ones that can engage in sophisticated dialogue, write code, and even exhibit creative abilities. This progress hasn't come from fundamental breakthroughs in AI architecture. It's come primarily from scaling up existing approaches. Yet, there's something humbling about this perspective. Rather than intelligence being some magical essence we need to decode, it might be an emergent property of large-scale information processing. 
this doesn't make it any less remarkable. In fact, it might make it more so. Just as the complexity of life emerged from simple chemical processes, the richness of intelligence might emerge from simple learning rules applied at scale. This insight leads to what Guern calls the bitter lesson of AI research. Simple methods plus computing power often outperform clever, complicated approaches. Time and again, researchers have tried to encode human knowledge and intelligence directly into AI systems, only to be outperformed by simpler systems trained on more data with more computing power.